Hello everyone and welcome to the Pup Mommy. Well in this <laughs> you want my yeah you 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 lipstick. Lipstick. Yeah, that's lipstick. You're a little guy. You you shouldn't be wearing lipstick. No. Anyway, <laughs> hello and welcome to the Pup Mommy. And this is my little Boston Terrier Thumper. And in this video, I am going to take you on a medical journey that I just undertook with my little Boston Terrier Thumper when he was recently diagnosed a couple of weeks ago with IBD, uh, inflammatory bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease, I should say. Now, I'm not a veterinarian. However, I am an owner and I am going to be approaching my experience to share with you of what I went through um, in terms of going through this diagnosis. And I have a $7,000 vet bill to prove it, which I will share with you later. So what I'm going to do is take you through what made me suspect that there was something more wrong with him than just simply a gastro problem. The steps that I took to find out what was wrong with him, how the diagnosis was arrived at, and now what do we do? So, um, what, first of all, what is inflammatory bowel disease? Inflammatory bowel disease, I'll call it IBD, is basically a chronic condition that affects the digestive system of an animal. And that usually includes inflammation of the intestines, and then that can create even more problems throughout the entire gastro system and organ system of the dog. Now, um, for some of you who may be suspecting that you're own dog may have IBD, you probably might be Googling and researching. And there are some breeds out there that are more predisposed to IBD, but I will tell you, I have found a couple of those websites and Boston Terriers weren't on the list. And recently, you know, I asked my internist about, you know, how does IBD strike dogs? Is it genetic? Is it congenital? And her response is no. And basically IBD can strike any dog at any age at any breed at any time. Now, little Thumper here, who is sleeping in my lap, or trying to, yes, I love you too, my little boy, I do. Uh, Thumper is not even five years old. So what are the symptoms of IBD? Well, on this slide that I took off of a veterinary website, um, these are six of the most common symptoms of IBD, but here is the real kicker for you. Thumper had only two out of the uh, six symptoms. He did not lose his appetite, he did not lose weight, he did not become lethargic. He's a very happy, active little boy. And if you were to actually look at the little guy, you would never know he had IBD. And also with him, he had the vomiting and he had the diarrhea. But the key, key here is he did not necessarily have vomiting as we think of it with dogs. With vomiting in dogs, normally there's a uh, 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 and then they heave. With Little Thumper, it was totally different. It was what the doctor then termed as regurgitation, meaning it just splat, it comes out. Out. Anytime, anywhere, day or night, he, little thumper can be sleeping and then all of a sudden splat. He can be walking down a hallway, splat. And so that in itself to me was extremely worrying and that was one of the reasons why I decided to pursue that this was, you know, something else was wrong with him and this just wasn't a simple gastro problem. Now, little Thumper here, who is sleeping in my lap, or trying to, yes, I love you too, my little boy, I do. Uh, Thumper is not even five years old. And how all of this started was that I would say, oh, back last year in late fall, I noticed that the little guy was starting to have vomiting and diarrhea episodes. So trot over to the regular vet to get some metronidazole. They run a couple tests and so forth. And it clears up and then it goes away. But, you know, then in the beginning of, 2023, um, he, it started becoming more chronic. It started more vomiting. It started more diarrhea. And if you want to really have a sense of what I've been putting up with, with little th thumper exploding from both ends, I'm going to count to five. And when I count to five, I'm then going to flash on the screen for five seconds exactly what I'm talking about in terms of what the little guy's output is. So one, two, three, four, five, close your eyes if you don't want to see it. One, two, three, four, five. Yuck. Over. 
So this basically was what I've been putting up with, with little guy throwing up from one end and throwing up and exploding from the other end. I went to my regular vet. Um, she ran a series of tests, uh, sent them to an outside laboratory, and the results came back as small intestine bacterial overgrowth known as SIBO, S-I-B-O. Then she prescribed again metronidazole, another met, uh, metoclopramide, then we tried Tylen powder. He wasn't responding to any of that. So it was at this point that I decided that I had exhausted all the knowledge of my regular local vet and I decided to take a little thumper over to VCA Hospital. Now VCA is a health system, is an animal health system with hospitals all over the country. Anyway, um, I consulted the internist there at VCA and based on the intake form as well as the existing medical records and also her examination, she prescribed a treatment plan, which I'm showing you over my shoulder. It contained two stages, one abdominal ultrasound and, and a series of tests that were sent to Texas A&M. And then when they came back, um, she, we were going to decide, dis she was going to decide whether or not that we had to do additional testing, a more invasive testing, or whether it could be medically managed. Well, it turned out, of course, that medical management was not in the cards. And you can see over um, on the slide exactly what the diagnosis was. He had a number of things going on with him. And um, as a result of the, you know, his continuing explosions, um, I decided decided to go through with phase two of the testing and treatment. And this is in order for IBD to be um, diagnosed, you have to go through biopsies and those can only be gotten through endoscopy. But because of Thumper's condition where we had the two, the, the two end explosions, uh, instead what Thumper went through was what is called a gastroduodenoscopy. So that means that the endoscopy, I mean basically the scope, goes through the intestines into the stomach and then into the colon. Um, some biopsies were taken. I went and picked him up after all of the procedures. Doctor showed me the films and there were some concerns. So I'm going to fast forward and when the results came back, um, the results came from a pathology lab, a PhD DVM did them, and poor little Thumper has inflammatory bowel disease among other issues. Now, right now, what are we doing to manage this? Um, he is on a hydrolyzed protein diet, and it I think the diet, I could best describe it, is uh, it looks like a little bowl of corn pops. Remember the corn pop cereal? That's exactly what it is, and it's crunchy like little Cheeto crunch balls. And he is what canned food, if you can even call it that, is if you were to take wallpaper paste and add a chicken bouillon cube, that is exactly what you would come up with. So IBD is not something that is curable, as I'm told. It can be medically managed, it can go in remission, but you're never really going to solve the problem, at least according to the doctor, the internist that I've seen. And I'm going to have to be have, um, right now, the little thumper is on five different medications. Uh, he's back on metoclopramide, he's on a small dose of prednisone, I hate that drug, but he's on it. Um, he's also on omeprazole, and he's on B12, and uh, he's on something else and it's oh, sucralfate which I have to syringe into his mouth so that's always that's always nice um, but anyway he's probably going to be on this diet for the rest of his life and he's probably going to be on a couple of the med medications for the rest of his life as well so that in a nutshell is my medical journey through IBD with little thumper and uh, I'm willing to bet that if you're suspecting that your dog has IBD you're probably going to be going on a similar journey as well with you know but remember that not all dogs are exactly the same but there is no other way to um, really you know diagnose um, IBD without doing an endoscopy and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the description section I hope I've helped you with this it's uh, it definitely is a medical journey it is definitely not inexpensive but I love my guy and I keep telling him when he was born, you came out all wrong. Yes, you did. You came out all wrong. 
Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Much appreciated. Don't forget to click and subscribe. Again, leave any questions or comments in the um, comment section below and I'll get back to you. So thank you very much for watching again and bye for now.